Hey, Bam here, and I love tech, so let's just go ahead and talk tech. And one story that I wanted to cover today is an often article that I read, uh, it was a little while ago, uh, on the subject of tablets. I've got a Galaxy Tab E here with me. It's the one that I've been using as my primary uh, tablet lately. And... Specifically, I wanted to address the issue of are tablets dying? And that is a very, very, very loaded question. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that while tab tablets were essentially uh, designed to be the go-between, to be the laptop replacement, obviously, uh, they could have been doing better about it in some ways and at the same time they have come quite a long way at first whenever for tablets were first introduced freaking everybody wanted them and then they kind of died down and now they're kind of on this steady but low demand rate and the answer is actually a hell of a lot more simple than what most people realize. Or at least, at least I'll t give you my theory on it. And it actually matches a theory that a tech reviewer on YouTube that I really like personally, MKBHD, uh, pointed out that tablets didn't really die they just found their niche. And basically what that means is that they are for a very specific group of people. Now me personally, I do a bunch of writing on my tablet and uh, a bunch of uh, videos, YouTube videos and different stuff like that. Uh, basically more heavy uh, web browsing, so to speak. And it's, mo it's mostly here at my house. Uh, I don't really take it traveling with me much, even in my own city, you know, going from my house to a family's house or back again. I don't really travel with it too much. It typically stays right here on my nightstand. And I've found that it's great for whenever, you know, my smartphone is on its wireless charging stand and it's charging because I'm basically done for the night or whatever like that. Or I know I'm not going to be going out anywhere that night. So basically, it's really good for that uh, secondary device away from my smartphone uh, being the LG G4. And... It is very, 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 very helpful for that. Now, obviously, uh, you know, you got your ability to write documents, everything like that. Basically, anything that you can do on your smartphone, you can also do on your tablet and vice versa, with the obvious exception of, well, you can, I was about ready to say with the obvious exception of CDs, but even a lot of, but even tablets don't do CDs because who does CDs anymore with the exception of, uh, with with the exception of most people older than my generation uh, being a 90s kid. So, basically, what I'm going getting at here is the fact that also, tablets have always been in that awkward middle grounds. Because of the fact they've ne that they've had a hard time reaching the full capabilities of a laptop, but at the same time, they're way too big to be a smartphone. And in all honesty, they don't really have, or at least back then, they didn't really have all the capabilities that a smartphone had. Now, literally the only difference, there's, well, yeah, literally the only difference between, there's only a couple of differences between my smartphone and my tablet. Uh, first of all, and the main difference being that, uh, I obviously can't take regular phone calls on my tablet. Uh, you know, you, you dial my number, it goes straight to my smartphone. But, with all, with the fact that most communication that 
I personally have is through like Facebook Messenger or email or I even do Google Hangouts still. Uh, different messaging apps like that. All of those are just Wi-Fi based or they're data based and data, yeah, internet, 4G LTE data. And so with that in mind and with the fact that this thing, that my tablet is actually data capable I actually, it goes off my smartphone data, everything like that. It begs the question, okay, so then literally the only real reason why I still have my smartphone is because a regular phone number so my grandma can call me and B and also my employer, my, my boss. And also the fact that it's just easier to stick my smartphone in my pocket versus I've got a little duffel bag that, you know, double strings and, sh you know, pull the strings apart to shut it at the top of it. And that's literally my bag for my tablet, aside from my actual laptop bag uh, that, you know, different uses, different things. But tablets have definitely uh, had always had a weird... Uh, medium between the smartphone and the desktop computer or laptop computer. Laptop computers are just so clunky compared to uh, tablets, especially whenever a tablet can literally be just, you know, an 8-inch screen, 12, you know, 8 to 10-inch screen. And even whenever you're able to dock your tablet onto a keyboard and fold it up and everything like that, and it's good to go. It basically becomes a laptop at that point. It's still much more convenient. First of all, the battery life is so much better on a tablet. You don't have any moving parts. Even a, a solid state hard drive is more uh, common than a tablet than a laptop. Uh, so it really be begs the question then, again, why have tablets not caught on as well? Well, it has to do with the idea of the awkward, that awkward middle ground between, uh, being a oversized smartphone and a really small laptop. And most of that has to do with the uh, the gra the uh, user interface. You know how the home screen is set up, how the grid, how the apps are laid out on the grid on the home screen. And to that, it, and that goes to the idea that okay, it's a little awkward to look at. It's not as eye catching because it looks like it's just randomly put together. Like the developers really didn't know what to. Do with it with all that extra screen space and everything like that and especially with the iPads because the fact that Apple still does not support widgets uh, and even with Android supporting widgets it's still a lot of screen space to use up and developers are just confused about it and to that I say push the boundaries of customization further so that that way you know with my LG G4, it has no, uh, it, it has no buttons on the front at all, on the front screen or anything like that. It has no buttons, it has no solid buttons. I can actually customize my uh, bottom buttons being my home screen, my multi-window button, and my back button. I can also throw in a, I, I've also got a button down there that lowers my top bar down for, you know, my notifications and settings and everything like that. My control buttons, Wi-Fi, data, Bluetooth, flashlight. And I've also got on the opposite corner of the bottom screen, a, a, the, uh, screenshot button. And I could also put in uh, the uh, multi-window view button into that as well. That's what I think, personally, that tablet developers and manufacturers need to do, is to push the bounds of customization even more. 
make it so that users can decide if they have however many grids up and up and down and across that they want on the home screen and as well as you know keep it so so that you know i've got buttons right here on my uh, on my uh bottom right there on the bottom right there so i'm not sure why because in all honesty, being able to have the home screen and the back screen and the multi-window screen and everything like that, it, it, it's so much, I find it better to have those buttons on the screen so that way I can A, move them around, or B, take them out completely if I don't want them. So, especially since I've got a power button on the side of it, I don't need the power button on the side of it that can wake it up like that. And the home screen screen button to wake it up as well. I only need one button for that. So, and so I guess that uh, in conclusion, it comes to the idea of the consumers, us, me included, telling the manufacturers to just have as much customization built into tablets as possible. And that also goes for the physical size of the tablets, too. Uh, you know, this is not that much bigger than... Uh, it, this is only a couple of inches bigger than my smartphone. My smartphone is like five point some odd inches. This is eight inches. It's really just a couple of inches uh, bigger. So, you know, I'm not happy with this size. I mean, the best thing I can say about this size is that I can fit it on the inside of my coat pocket, uh, rather uh, on uh, my coat pocket on the in on the inside coat pocket, yeah, on the inside coat pocket, I can slip it into there in my inside coat pocket and not really have to carry around a bag if I'm not planning on you know, uh, if I'm not planning on uh, bringing my charger and everything like that with me, because that's the other thing about tablets too; they have a longer battery life than. Uh, t than smartphones. I can l normally be fine for like two days without having to worry about charging. So that's the other thing too that I was going to go to actually originally was the fact, was the idea that, you know, have tablets that range anywhere from, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the biggest size of smartphone out there, I think on the market, uh, I think we're approaching six inches right now have them have the screens be you know that six inches plus you know keep it you know keep it going on up till you know you get to basically a laptop or a uh, tablet that's the same size as a laptop screen so and basically every size in between uh, you could even make tablets that technically are smartphones but just that they don't have a regular number they always have to go off of wi-fi that's a possibility hell i remember seeing uh something like that in the works i'm not really sure what happened to it but that's always a possibility still so i say i personally say yay to tablets and you know us as the consumers need to keep pushing this, otherwise it's not going to happen. And I know there's plenty of people out there that could definitely use a secondary device. Going live on Facebook or on YouTube, for example. You know, uh, that that going live on, on uh, social media literally takes up the device, period. It's not like call waiting or anything like that. It, and it sure as the hell isn't, it's, it's literally recording a video. But if you have that secondary device that, you know, oh, uh, you know, you get off the live uh, video and you can go ahead and answer that message real fast and then go back live again without necessarily have to, having to stop live. So the idea here is, is that manufacturers and uh, people that actually make the make the tablets 
are confused as to what us consumers want because we're not really doing a very good job at telling them from what I can tell. Uh, maybe there is and I just don't know it. Maybe there's maybe manufacturers are getting the idea of what we want and they're somehow not doing it. I don't know. All I know is, is that tablets have definitely uh, had a hard time recently, lately, and it's up to us consumers to decide whether or not we actually want them. Otherwise, they will probably die out eventually. I mean, any more now, they're really just made to say, yeah, I've got a tablet. And that's it. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on my Patreon, and I should have that up, if not tonight, then definitely tomorrow, so that way, you know, you like what I'm doing on here, I want to be able to do better videos, I want to be able to do editing, I want to be able to do animation, I want to get a better camera, and... My part-time job right now is decent. It lets me pay the bills, uh, but that's about it. So, anyway, I'm going to get that set up, and once I do, the link to my Patreon will be in the description below. And I will also obviously post another video. I will post the link to my previous video in the description of this video. And let's get the comments going. What do you guys think about... Uh, what's your thought on tablets? Uh, do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm completely off? Uh, somewhere in the middle? If you like this video, like it. If not, dislike it and see ya. Uh, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. See ya.